Hello class, today we'll be covering the 1920s, chapter 25 in the textbook. And the first two lectures will be on uh, the identifications of uh, first the League of Nations, and uh, the second one is uh, Eric Maria Remarque. So first, first we'll begin with the League of Nations. Okay, so in quick summary, um, the atmosphere that was going on uh, at the time of the creation of the League of Nations was greatly influenced by the end of World War I. World War I had just ended, which as you know was one of the largest wars in world history from 1914 to 1918. And the United States was victorious in the war, uh, as well as um, allies, um, France and England. And, and the, then the uh, Germany uh, lost uh, and surrendered, and so did Austria-Hungary -Hung Empire. So Germany and Austria-Hungary surrendered at the end of World War I. And it was this time during the, the signing of the treaties and, and uh, the surrender of, of those two countries. Uh, President Woodrow Wilson, Democrat um, of the United States, um, uh, president uh, for the for the full uh, duration of the war, came up with what he called the League of Nations. And he created the League of Nations, uh, which went into effect in 1920. So that's the time uh, it was uh, the League of Nations began in 1920. And it was Woodrow Wilson's dream that the countries of the world would regularly meet to try and avoid future wars and to work together on, on different issues uh, in, in a, a, what we have similar to, that, to say today is the United Nations. But back then in, in 1920, it was called the League of Nations. And Woodrow Wilson went on a train trip across the United States uh, promoting this idea. Um, but it really wasn't that popular, uh, especially among the Senate here in the United States. But it was very popular uh, among the other countries who had been in World War I. So he was successful in creating the League, but ironically he could not get his own country to join it, so the United States did not join. So the League was created in 1920, and it was the first international group of countries uh, to be organized, um, and its main mission was to stop wars and to help promote world peace. It actually lasted for uh, 26 years. So you, you can see from this slide of a newspaper of the era, the League of Nations was assailed in the Senate. So the United States Senate rejected it. But the League still was created worldwide, which is without the United States being in it. So Woodrow Wilson's idea or dream did happen, uh, but it was minus the United States. Um, so it, it uh, like I said before, it lasted 26 years. Um, um, many different countries joined it. Uh, the official language of the League of Nations was French, English, and Spanish. Um, and the League actually grew and by 19... 34 of uh, 58 countries had joined, including Ecuador. And it lasted for 26 years uh, until it was replaced by the United Nations in 1946. Uh, so the League's goal was to prevent future wars by having meetings um, and uh, between countries. And that's the, the main purpose of, of the League of Nations. So the next um, lecture and identification is uh, Eric uh, Maria Remark. Um, you can see the spelling there on this uh, picture of his uh, cover page of his famous book, All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, so uh, Eric Remark was born in 1898 
and died in 1970, 1898 through 1970. Uh, he was uh, not at all a writer in his, his young, younger years. He was uh, a soldier. He was born in Germany. Uh, he actually lived through World War I and was a soldier in the war and, and experienced all of the battlefront um, conditions of World War I. Um, he, uh, he actually joined the German army in 1917 at some of the worst parts of World War I. So he experienced the horrors of the war and, and lived through the war, um, having lost most of his comrades in the war. Uh, so he wrote this book, uh, and what he's famous for is writing this book. Uh, he wrote this book based on his real-life experiences in World War I. Uh, and he wrote it as a story. It was not, it's, it's a fictional, I mean, it's a, it's a story with uh, fictional characters. Um, so the, the people in, in the book are not real, but they were based on very real experiences that he had, which made it uh, to be a powerful book. And so the book examined the horrors of war, but it also talked about daily life and his friendships and with these fictional characters, but, but he interwove all the true stuff that really happened to him. Uh, but it really was not meant to be an anti-war book, but in many ways, people who were very much upset at the brutality of this particular war um, took it as, as an anti-war book. So he, he wrote this book shortly after the war, and uh, it became a bestseller in the world. Uh, there were many scenes about like poison gas and the things we talked about when we covered World War I and, and machine gun fire for the first time used in a war and artillery shells and the devastation of that. So that was all included in his book. It, it became a bestseller and, uh, in the world, and it was printed in 22 different languages. And, uh, and it was a bestseller in the United States also. Uh, then the book uh, later became uh, a movie, a, a very well-known movie uh, in the United States. Um, as you can see, it won... Um, two Academy Awards, uh, including Best Picture. Okay, so that that's the... Uh, um, so Eric Maria Remark uh, was an author who wrote uh, the famous uh, book about World War I called All Quiet on the Western Front. So that, that should about cover uh, this, this section of the lecture. Um, you should go on to the, the next lecture, and we'll cover more on the 1920s.